Hi, I'm Mark Yaxley. Welcome back to Inside the Vault. Following season one, we received a lot of questions from viewers who had enjoyed what they saw in the videos, but wanted to know how to buy precious metals. It might seem like a very simple question, but there are actually a lot of intricacies and details when it comes to buying gold and silver, especially when it's your first time. So in today's episode, we're gonna explain how to buy precious metals and also answer some of the most frequently asked questions about buying gold and silver and taking delivery. We have a lot to talk about, so let's get started. So there are many different ways that you can gain exposure to precious metals. For example, you could buy a precious metals ETF or buy into a fund. You could buy mining stocks, or of course you can buy physical bars and coins. Because owning physical bars and coins is the only way that you can own the metal as your own personal property, removing all third party risk, that's what we're gonna focus on in today's episode. Rule number one when buying precious metals is always buy from a reputable source. So the question is, what makes someone reputable? I look for things like longevity. So how long has the business been selling metal for? What kind of customer reviews can I find about them online? Do they have a good reputation within the local community if I'm buying from a local dealer? These are all things you're gonna to wanna to look for before you even consider your first purchase. I always encourage people to consider using a local option when they're making their first purchase of precious metals. The reason that I say that is that you can go down to the shop and speak one-on-one -on -one with an experienced person who will be able to take the time and answer all of the questions that you might have. So if you do have a local coin dealer who's reputable, who's been in business for a long time, they might be a good option for your first purchase. But local coin dealers do have some limitations as well. It can be in terms of the product selection that they offer you, or if you're looking to make a larger purchase, they might not have the capability to service your order, at least not immediately. In the case of a larger purchase, you might have to look at a precious metal dealer that's in another city that has more cash flow capacity, or you might have to go online. If you live in a big city, chances are you have access to a larger number of dealers, they'll have bigger offices, and you'll have access to a wider variety of products that you can select from. But again, you wanna make sure that you're dealing with someone that has good customer feedback and who's offering you fair prices. It can be a little bit hit or miss, but if you base your decision on reputation, chances are you're gonna be dealing with a company that's been around for a long time and the only way they would have survived over the years is by offering good customer service and fair prices. Your final option, of course, is to go online to buy precious metals. Now, there are a number of dealers online, like in any industry, you're gonna find a plethora of options to buy from. And this can be a good thing for the consumer because all of these companies are competing for your business online, that tends to drive down the prices that they're gonna offer you. Also, they're gonna have to offer you shipping and delivery services so that you can take delivery of the metals to your home or to your business. Some online retailers will also offer you the ability to store your precious metals in one of their vaults or a storage program that they're offering. Now, like with anything else you do online, you are gonna to wanna to proceed with some caution. Again, do your research to make sure you're buying from a reputable dealer and a website that looks fully secure because you are gonna to have to provide some of your personal information and data in order to complete the transaction. A word of caution, we strongly advise against buying from pawn shops or retailers with a very limited product selection. Also, I have heard some horror stories about people receiving fake or replica bars from some large online retailers such as eBay or Alibaba. So if you are going to buy from sources like that, make sure you're buying from a reputable seller and never buy precious metals for less than the spot price. You won't be getting a deal you're most likely going to be getting a fake. Whenever you're buying gold or silver, you can expect to pay at least the spot price and probably a small premium over it. Anything less is probably not a real product. Once you've found a reputable dealer, the next step is to determine which products best fit your portfolio, which products should you buy. In season one, we did two full episodes dedicated to gold versus silver and bars versus coins. So I recommend you spend some time and check those out. Today, we're gonna to focus on four basic questions that you should answer. Number one, which metal type or types would you like to own? Are you only gonna invest in gold, for example, or do you want a more diversified portfolio? Second, are you looking to buy coins or bars? 
And if you're going to be buying bars, are they going to be smaller format or larger format? You can start as small as one ounce or you can buy 10, 100, even up to 1,000 ounce silver bars. So you're going to want to decide which format, which size of products you're going to be buying. Number three, obviously a very personal question is what quantity or what value of precious metals am I looking to invest? You're going to want to determine this number before you get serious about shopping because it is going to affect the options available to you. And lastly, are you going to be taking delivery of the metals to your home or are you going to be looking at storage options where the metals are kept safe and secure and insured inside of a vault? When talking about the type of precious metals that you're going to be purchasing, there are five metals that make up the precious metals family. You have gold, silver, which most people are familiar with, but you also have platinum, palladium, and rhodium. So you're going to want to decide, is my portfolio going to consist of one single metal or is it going to consist of multiple metals? Most portfolios have both gold and silver in them, but I personally recommend that you consider owning some platinum group metals as well to add even more diversification and potential upside to your precious metals portfolio. When deciding whether or not you're going to be buying coins or bars, each will come with their own advantages and disadvantages. Generally, the primary advantages of buying coins is reputation, liquidity, and a potential better sellback price when it comes time to liquidate. The disadvantage being that you're generally going to pay a little bit more for coins when buying compared to bars. The primary advantages of buying bars is the premium that you're going to save when purchasing versus coins which can be a little bit more expensive. On the flip side, the disadvantage being that you can expect to get a little bit less money back when you're selling your bars. And also you're going to have to sell the entire bar if you own, for example, a 100 ounce silver bar or a 1000 ounce silver bar. You're going to have to sell the whole thing and that can affect the liquidity of that product in certain smaller markets. Now, when it comes to the value of your investment, how much precious metals are you going to buy? That's an entirely personal decision. I can't tell you how much money to spend on gold and silver. Typically, financial advisors do throw out a number of owning about 10% of your overall investment portfolio in precious metals. But based on research that I've seen, that number can actually be significantly higher, anywhere between 20 to 30% especially during times of crisis or pre-crisis. Now, in terms of buying, there are two approaches that you can take. You could cost average into your overall precious metals position, which means you can make multiple smaller transactions. But the disadvantage there is that you might pay a slightly higher premium for the products that you're buying because you're buying smaller quantities each time, multiple times over and over again. The other option is that you could come in for one larger bulk buy and benefit from volume discounts that are usually offered by retailers. Now let's talk home delivery versus private storage. Again, it's a very personal decision. I would recommend that you keep some precious metals at home. The idea of owning precious metals is to create security for yourself and for your loved ones and having it close to home has its benefits. However, there is a certain line in the sand that you have to draw considering the physical security of the precious metals and also the people that might be in the house where those precious metals are stored. So generally speaking, I wouldn't recommend that you store more than $10,000 worth of precious metals at home. There's also a question of insurance. Are you going to be able to get insurance for the precious metals that you decide to keep under the bed? You have to speak to your insurance company about that, but I know that it can be difficult for some private people to obtain that insurance at home. Now, when it comes to either taking delivery or storing in a private facility, again, that's a very personal decision. We're going to spend a whole episode during season two talking about home storage. The other option that you have is to store those precious metals in a private facility like SWP or other reputable vaults that are available to you. These places were purposely built to store precious metals. All of the bells and whistles exist to keep your precious metals safe. We also offer the insurance necessary that if anything were to ever happen to your precious metals, they would be replaced at their full market value, which probably wouldn't be the case if you chose to store them at home and something were to go wrong. You receive reports, you receive third-party audits, 
And in some cases, you can actually come down to the vault and visit your precious metals. So you don't have to feel like you have no access to them. I would recommend private storage for any amount of precious metals above $10,000. I know this might feel a little bit like information overload, but the good news is you're almost there. Buying precious metals is one of the simplest investments you're ever going to make. Once you've decided on the types of products and quantity that you're going to purchase, the next steps are very straightforward. First of all, contact your precious metals dealer and they're going to provide you with a quote. Once you've reviewed the quote and you accept the total cost of the order, you're basically going to confirm that quote. That's gonna be done either by email, online, or over the phone. Once you've confirmed your quote, you've entered a legally binding agreement with the dealer for that set of precious metals at the determined price. If the market price were to go down or up after you've already locked in the price, your price is going to be respected. The total that the dealer and yourself have agreed upon is going to remain the same. So you no longer have to worry about the market price of the metals you're buying. The next step is to pay for your precious metals. Now, some dealers do ask you to pre-fund your account before you can even place the order, especially when you're buying a lot. They'll need the cash flow in order to cover the order. However, in most cases, you can place the order, lock in the quote, and then pay for your order afterwards. Generally speaking, Precious metal dealers like to be paid by bank wire because it's very fast and efficient. The funds are moving between bank accounts very quickly. Other payment options include check, cash, or even Bitcoin these days. So you can speak to your precious metals dealer about their preferred payment methods. Once your order is paid for, it can either be picked up, delivered, or sent to a private vault if that's the option that you selected. If you selected during the course of the transaction to have your order delivered, you're going to want to ask the dealer what delivery method it is. Generally speaking, you're going to want the shortest amount of delivery time possible. A lot of dealers in the industry use a two-day service with FedEx, UPS, or USPS if you happen to be in the United States. The other important element of taking delivery of precious metals is to make sure that your shipment is fully insured from door to door until you sign for it. One tip, if you do live in a larger building, either a condo building or an apartment building, you're going to want to make sure that you clearly indicate to the dealer that there is a required signature for the package so that when it's delivered to the building, it isn't left in a common area like the lobby. You don't want your neighbor getting an early Christmas gift. We also received a few questions from our viewers about selling precious metals. They wanted to know if that was a difficult process. In fact, it's very simple and it looks similar to when you're buying precious metals. The first thing you're gonna do is contact the dealer and ask them to provide you with a quote. If you find that quote acceptable, you'll lock in the transaction so the price will be fixed and then you'll have to deliver the metals to them either in person shipping them and if you do ship them you want to make sure that they're insured otherwise if they're in a vault they'll be transferred from your account to the dealer's account thanks for watching today's episode we hope that you learned just how easy it is to purchase precious metals of course if you have any follow-up questions don't hesitate to reach out you can email us at info at swpcayman.com you can always tweet us at swpgold or subscribe to our YouTube channel and educate yourself by watching our great videos. Thanks, see you again soon.